Okay, data table for the IMS, the mixing things experiment. We're going to draw a table. You're going to want some blank paper, more than one page, a pen, not a pencil, some sort of a straight edge. I just suggest a ruler so that we can measure out, make this table right. And we're going to draw the table by hand, right? At one level, that, that, that that's kind of childish. I wouldn't disagree with you, but at the other hand, being able to draw things out cleanly, having an expectation of what's in your head, and actually making it fit on a page of paper. There's a lot to be said for that, and that's what distinguishes a real scientist from somebody that just has a lot of good ideas in their head. So, before you start, you got to organize, right? I suggested six things we're going to mix. Some water, vinegar, two oils, coconut oil, oil number two. You can pick your own oils. Maybe have a different color so that you can see if they mix or not, salt and sugar. So there's six things we're going to mix that might lead you to believe that the table is going to be six by six, but you need an extra row, an extra, an extra, an extra row, an extra column for the headers. So the table is actually going to need to be seven by seven. And you'll notice if you draw a square, a, a one by one table, there, there, there's two lines horizontal, two lines vertical. In general, there's the n plus one rule. So if we want to draw a seven by seven column, we're going to need to make eight horizontal lines and eight vertical lines. So again, making a little calculation on paper, there's two errors here in my first attempt. First of all, this table's way too small. You might be able to read that I tried to write water and vinegar, but this is what we call an unreadable table. It's just a waste of everybody's time, your time. Nobody's going to be able to read it because they can't. And also, you might notice that I drew this table freehand. That's not going to work so well. Let's use a straight edge. So second option might be, okay, let's make this as big as possible. Just one cell on a page. What's going to happen when I mix the water and the coconut oil? You'll obviously be able to squeeze all your data in here. And yet, keep in mind... You're going to be mixing, you know, more than a dozen things. This this report, this table would go on for, you know, maybe 15 pages. And if you're a university professor, PhD student, a lawyer, working in a government research lab, this is one way to make yourself look smart by having a super thick report that goes on and on and on. Unlike the little table, which nobody can read, the big table might have all the information, but nobody's going to read it. Who wants to read 15 pages, right? Nobody's, nobody's going to do that either. So we'll do a little calculation here, and I've already worked this out. But if we want eight columns, what if we made them each an inch wide so that we can fit eight inches, one column per inch, on our eight and a half inch wide paper? So I'm going to draw the top of the table, and then I'm going to hash it out every inch so that I can connect the dots. Now I could make the columns also an inch tall, right? But that would only bring me eight inches down on my 11 inch paper. And, you know, I got a little extra room to work with. So what if I made these lines, not every inch, but made the columns an inch and a quarter tall? That'll get me down to the 10 inch mark because one and a quarter, 1.25 times eight is gonna bring you to 10. So again, you might wanna get a calculator out. I've done this a lot, so you know I'm going through this kind of fast, but you, you might need to make the calculation. I'm gonna mark off at one and a quarter inches, two and a half, three and three quarters, and then we're at five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and you see that last one is gonna bring us out at 10. So that's how we know that we, we did a good job there. And then again, on the bottom, we pull the paper up so it's on camera. We're gonna come across, gonna come across the bottom again, another eight inches, kind of keeping the, the ruler parallel with the edge of the page. First, I'll draw my eight inch line. And then I'm going to hash it out every inch on the inch, 246, 2456, and 7 inches. And then we need to complete this thing, maybe working from the bottom up. 
Noticing that these lines are indeed about 10 inches apart. I got a little wiggle room. I'll just, I'll just split the difference. I'm going to draw in my line. And again, we have one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters. And that last line is exactly an inch and a quarter. So this is the easy part, right? Because you spent 10 minutes planning, you save yourself an hour worth of work, and we're going to connect the dots, right? Drawing out the grid of the table, and maybe I'll just skip a couple steps here in, in the interest of time. I know you know how to connect the dots, right? The interesting thing is the planning. That's what it's going to make it look good. So I'll complete maybe just the first the first three or so of these. And so on. So there's not going to be anything in this upper right hand quarter. Checking my list, the first thing is water. So water is going to go here, water, and here, water. And part of the exercise was to indicate the strongest IMF. So for water, it's going to be H bond. Maybe I'll just write it once instead of twice. You do need the column header, but you don't necessarily need to repeat H bond. The next thing is vinegar, CH3COOH. And it has an O bonded to an H. So again, vinegar is going to have some H bonding. So let's come down to this cell of water and vinegar, right? First thing is the observation. Would water and vinegar mix? You might say, yes, they mix. Why would they mix? Well, it's a strong IMF with a strong IMF. H bond with H bond. Both vinegar and water have an H bond. Let's complete one more line on the table. Next, I have some sort of an oil. When oil is nonpolar, is dispersion forces. And now, just keep it short. Let's just say maybe no mix. Why? Because it's a strong IMF with a weak IMF. And that's the idea. You can complete the table. Now, one more thing to notice is this cell for water and vinegar, there, there's another cell with water and vinegar here. So only the bottom left or the top right you're going to need to complete. You could ask yourself whether or not you want to complete these diagonal cells, mixing water with water, mixing vinegar with vinegar. I, I, I think we know they would mix because obviously the forces have to be the same. So go ahead, complete the table on your own. I believe there's going to be about 15 cells or so to complete. And then the other side can all be X's.